Oh. So, okay, good morning, students. So, the subject code is hematology, and the code, subject name is hematology, and the code is 21 MSH 713. And uh, today we are discussing about the introduction to hematology. So, am I audible, visible, and is my PPT visible to you, by the way? Is everything clear, students? Can I continue the class? Yes. Can I continue the class? Yes, I got messages. All right, Warren and Damini. I'm going to start the class. Okay. So in the last lecture, we discussed about the functions of uh, blood. Okay. So here, the basic functions of blood include to carry oxygen, carbon dioxide, and protective functions such as with the help of white blood cells. So they will be able to kill uh, all types of pathogens. And uh, we discussed about the uh, blood helps in coagulation, and uh, it, it is it plays a vital role in hemostatic mechanism. Then blood plays a vital role in transport of nutrients such as albumin, carbohydrates, protein, lipids. Then uh, blood also acts as an excretion function to remove the metabolic waste products from the body. Then it also maintains a pH by the action called a bicarbonate buffer system. Then uh, blood also main, uh, distributes the temperature, body temperature, evenly within the body. Uh, that is one function. Then blood uh, contributes to the blood pressure. Urine formation is due to blood. Then long-term growth facilitation can be done by uh, blood with the help indirectly with the help of hormones. Then blood will facilitate normal function of the home, uh, body organs, which is called homeostasis. And also, uh, it plays a vital role in homeostasis. Oh, yeah. These are the basic functions of blood. Then we discuss about the properties of blood. So coming to the properties, color it is a uh, red in color because of hemoglobin presence. Then the volume of blood is in an adult will be around 4.5 to 5.5 liters. Then viscous blood is five times more viscous than water. pH of uh, blood will be around 7.3 to 7.42. Okay. Then the specific gravity of blood is 1.52. Then the morphology of red blood cell is biconcave in shape. Then there is no nucleus in the red blood cell, and the uh, the normal red blood cell count is around 5.5 uh, million cells per cubic millimeter of blood. So these are the some basic properties of blood. Then coming to the syllabus. So in, in your syllabus, syllabus, if you check, so unit one is all about uh, uh, bleeding disorders. Unit two is, uh, uh, chapter two is a transfusion medicine. Chapter three is coagulation disorders. Then in the unit two, they discuss about the immune, immunohematology. Okay, the immunological problems with uh, blood related and autoimmune disorders of blood. So these are the things that there is automation, sorry. So the automations in uh, hematology. So the, I think they covered the entire branch of this hematology. Okay, so we need to study everything regarding the blood. Since you are master students, the syllabus is heavy and you must study all overview of this blood entirely. Okay, so in today's lecture, I will start with uh, some basics to the advanced things, a summary of uh, hematology. Okay, I will share my computer screen. Just a second, I will stop this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not to stop it. Okay. I'm sharing my computer screen. One second. Mm. Okay. Uh, let me this. this. Mm. Okay. Can you see my screen, students? Can you see my PPT? You can see, right? Yes. Okay. So let me take one in separation. Ah. Okay. So coming to the branches of hematology. So very important lecture. Kindly pay attention, students. So the branches of hematology is classically divided into three types. Okay, one is basic hematology, second one is a transfusion medicine, and third one is bleeding disorders. So in basic hematology, we will uh, we will go with the with the techniques which are basic uh, regarding blood. Like we will go with the total red blood cell count in basic hematology, total white blood cell count. Okay, which is also called differential count, DLC, differential leukocyte count. Then we will we, okay we have DLC. Then we have PCV, packed cell volume. Then we have ESR, erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Then we have red cell indices, red cell indices. Then we will also do some basic tests like platelet count. Okay, platelet count. And what else basic tests we will do in basic hematology students? Platelet counts, then eosinophil count. Eosinophil count. Oh, then uh, we can also do HB. 
HB count in basic hematology. Sometimes, okay, there is a problem. We can also do PTCT in basic hematology. So these are the few tests we will do in basic hematology. Okay, these are the tests that are contributing to the basic uh, status of the cells of the blood. Okay, uh, the status of red blood cells and the status of white blood cells in the blood. Uh, obviously, we know that there are granular sites and granular sites, neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils are granulocytes, and agranulocytes include monocytes and lymphocytes. Okay, so all these things, the differential count, everything will be uh, done in the basic hematology. Uh, basic hematology most over emphasizes on the basic properties of the blood. Okay, the basic properties of the blood can be determined by this basic hematological tests. Okay, they will they will just look after the basic components of the blood. It can be platelets, red blood cells, or white blood cells, and their levels, uh, including the the uh, hemoglobin levels of the blood. So these are the basic tests we will do in a basic hematology. Okay, and then what test we will perform in transfusion medicine? So now uh, the now my students, transfusion medicine is a sub branch of blood banking. Okay, so transfusion medicine is can also be stated as a blood banking or blood banking and immunohematology is closely related with this transfusion medicine. Okay, so immunohematology and blood banking are same because here we are we are utilizing certain uh, antibodies to detect uh, uh, okay, immunology. Here antibodies will be detected for doing some tests. So both blood banking and immunohematology will go hand in hand. Okay. So uh, what are the tests we will perform in blood banking or transfusion medicine? So here we will go with blood grouping, okay, blood grouping, blood grouping. Mm, then we will go with cross matching, cross matching. That can be minor cross matching, major cross matching. Or we will also do donor screening, donor screenings, okay, blood screening for uh, hepatitis, malaria, then uh, tuberculosis and uh, syphilis will be screened in the blood. And uh, what else test we, test we will do in transfusion medicine? Can anyone tell me students? Cross-matching blood grouping, RH typing, RH typing. Mm, we can also perform uh, other tests like uh, some, uh, okay, some advanced blood grouping test, like Bombay blood grouping, Bombay grouping test. And there are some uh, compatibility. Uh, Compatibility test, compatibility test we will do in uh, blood banking. Okay, so this is all about the transfusion medicine. So in transfusion medicine, we are checking whether we can able to transfuse this blood to the second person or not, from donor to recipient. Is if there is any con consequences in the recipient, what type of consequence we will get, and how to detect the consequences and how to countermeasure the consequences and how to safely transfuse the blood. So all these uh, uh, transfusion related lab tests and their protocols will be performed in transfusion medicine, which is a sub-branch of hematology. Okay, so these are the major tests we will do in the transfusion medicine. Then coming to the bleeding disorders. Okay, what is this bleeding disorders? See, um, uh, so whenever there is a cut, blood will start bleeding, right? So this bleeding happens, that is called bleeding time. So bleeding time is one bleeding, uh, one test we will do. And this bleeding time, the, the, the bleeding will be stopped by platelets. So platelet count is also done in bleeding disorders. So bleeding time. Then uh, we will also do clotting time. So now clotting time means, uh, so first we got bleeding, we got a cut, then we got bleeding. Then this uh, bleeding is prevented by platelets. After prevention of platelets, bleeding time has been stopped. The bleeding has been stopped. Now the blood must be uh, able to clot. The semi-solid blood should be able to clot it. And that is called clotting time. So how much time it took for the clotting? That is called clotting time. Now, uh, clotting time is contributed by this clotting factors. Clotting, clot, there are almost 13 clotting factors. Okay, these clotting factors contribute to the clotting of blood. Now, any deficiencies in these clotting factors, okay, like fibrinogen, prothrombin, tissue thromboplastin, calcium, labile. So we have 13 clotting factors. Any Deficiency in these clotting factors results in excessive clotting time. Prolonged clotting time occurs due to deficiency of any clotting factors. Now, how to identify these clotting factors? So this clotting mechanism happens in an intrinsic and extrinsic pathway. Extrinsic pathway. Okay. Now, there are certain tests to deter 
the abnormalities in the intrinsic part of the clotting mechanism and the abnormalities of extrinsic part of the clotting mechanism. Okay, these uh, these intrinsic and extrinsic uh, uh, pathway clotting abnormalities can be detected by a group of tests called bleeding profile. The, these pro, these tests are called as bleeding profile. In this bleeding profile, we will go with uh, uh, thromb thromboplastin time. Uh, uh, clot, uh, clotting time, bleeding time, then uh, activator partial thromboplastin time, then thrombin gener uh, GTT, thrombin generation test, okay, TGT, thrombin generation test, then APTT, activator partial thromboplastin time with kyolin. Okay, so all, these are all the tests that we can perform in order to identify bleeding disorders. Not only these tests, sometimes even platelet dysfunction, platelet function test. Uh, we may have normal platelets in the body, but those platelets are not functioning properly. So we will, we will also go with platelet function tests. Okay, uh, those platelet function tests include clot retraction test, clot retraction test, then we have uh, retraction, okay? Clot retraction tests we have, then we have uh, platelet secretion tests, then we have uh, fibrinogen levels, fibrinogen test, then we have platelet activation tests, then platelet uh, aggregation tests, then platelet adhesion tests, so there are many tests that we can perform in bleeding uh, disorders, okay? So there are tests that to detect hemophilia, there are tests to detect catalysemia. So all these bleeding associated disorders can be detected in this bleeding disorder tests, okay? So we have bleeding time, clotting time, platelet count, platelet function test, uh, clotting factor deficiencies like uh, the TT, CT, BT, APT, TGT, all these tests will be performed in the bleeding disorders. And this is all, uh, all about the syllabus you have in the hematology. Okay, it, it focused on all branches of hematology, including basic transfusion and bleeding disorders. So let us see your first unit. As per the syllabus, the first unit discusses about bleeding disorders, to my knowledge. So they given all uh, bleeding disorders here, okay? Coagulopathy, coagulation factor screenings, prothrombin time, activated partial thromboplastin time, pro uh, thrombin time, uh, plasma fibrinogen test. So all this has been given in the chapter one. So let us uh, move directly to the chapter one, okay, of uh, your uh, bleeding disorders. So I'm going to the chapter one of bleeding disorders. So now I will take a new slide and uh, I will discuss about uh, hemostasis, hemostasis in detail, stasis mechanism, mechanism of the body. Okay, so let me discuss what is hemostasis. So I will take the full screen of this presentation, one second. Okay. Uh, let me stop this and let me keep it full screen. Okay. Hemostatic mechanism. Hmm. One second, students. Okay. Is my are you following me, students? Is there any issues so far? Do you understood the branches of hematology, everyone? Are you following everyone, students? Yes. Why there is no answer from you? Is everyone following the lecture? Oh yes, okay, I got response from Dhamini. Only Dhamini Preeti's few students are listening to this. Mm. Okay. All right, students. So I'm discussing about the hemostatic mechanism now. Uh, one second. Okay. So yeah, let me take a highlighter. Okay. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So imagine this is our red blood cell. Okay. Sorry. This is our blood vessel. Okay. So this is blood vessel. So this summary is very important. Kindly pay utmost attention. So now. Whenever there is a blood vessel cut, okay. So now we got a blood vessel cut. So let me take. A, uh, so there is a damage to this blood vessel, okay. Uh, here, 
so here the blood vessel has been damaged so blood vessel damaged whenever blood vessel damaged now this blood vessel is uh, surrounded by endothelial cells so this blood vessel has endothelial cells so these are endothelial cells okay so inside the blood vessel it has uh, endothelial cells so this endothelial cells will get exposed okay so, so now there is one more thing one more involvement this endothelial cells are interconnected by collagen fibers so with the help of collagen fibers this endothelial cells have been connected together so whenever there is a damage to the blood vessel the collagen fibers will get exposed this collagen fibers cf collagen fibers will get exposed okay collagen fibers has been exposed and there is a damage to the endothelial cells of the blood vessel now immediately after this damage there are the smallest cells in the blood which are called platelets so these platelets okay they are platelets and these platelets will perform three important functions so now i will tell the functions of platelets there are three functions of platelets so i'm writing here so the three functions of platelets are attach adhesion aggregation and activation triple a okay first one is attachment second one is uh, aggregation attachment can also be stated as adhesion okay ad adhesion or attachment so first in the attachment of platelets second one is aggregation of platelets and third one is activation of platelets activation of platelets okay now, now uh, see here so there are uh, platelets roaming in the blood so since there is a cut and there the blood is started bleeding here so let me show bleeding here all right yeah. this online is really tough students this all of this huh. okay now the patient started bleeding so the bleeding time has been increased so there is bleeding here okay which can be measured by uh, bleeding time so now uh, now listen very carefully first there is damage to blood vessel then collagen fibers has been exposed now to this collagen fibers there is a molecule called von willebrand factor there is a molecule that is exposed that is present on the surface of collagen fibers called von willebrand factor vwf von willebrand factor okay now the roaming platelets will bind will attach to this von willebrand factor so a platelet will come here and this platelet will do its first first function which is the attachment platelet will attach to the von willebrand factor okay this is called the platelet attachment okay now after attachment of this platelet now this platelet will release certain cytokines into the blood stream it will release some cytokines okay adp it will release some cytokines like adp now because of this release of cytokines this cytokines will act as a cell signaling molecules now many platelets will start aggregating they will start coming to this site of damage okay this is called platelet aggregation see because of this cytokine involvement many platelets came to the site of bleeding and they will attach to von willebrand factor like this okay so all platelets started aggregating at the site of bleeding now this crowded platelets will bind each other by one protein that i will discuss later by some receptors these platelets will attach each other okay uh, this is called platelet aggregation so this receptor is called gp1b and this receptor is called gp2b3a okay so uh, gp1b is responsible for attachment of platelet to the von willebrand factor and gp2b3a receptor is responsible for uh, binding of platelet to the next platelet which is called aggregation so these two receptors are very important for attachment and the aggregation of platelets okay now platelets has aggregated upon aggregation what they will do is they will get activated this platelets will get activated now in the in the plasma of blood we have uh, an inactive form called fibrinogen fibrinogen okay fibrinogen is present in the plasma it is in gen form that means inactivated form so okay now our activated platelets will convert 
fibrinogen to fibrin. This activated platelets will convert fibrinogen to fibrin, and this fibrin will clot the blood. This fibrin will clot the blood. They will clot the blood. Now, how these platelets converted fibrinogen to fibrin? How they converted fibrinogen to fibrin? They converted this fibrinogen to fibrin by usage of 13 clotting factors. So there are 13 clotting factors. Those clotting factors will convert one, one or another. So ultimately, it results in clotting of blood. Now, if there is any deficiency in these clotting factors, then clotting time will increase. If there is any deficiency in the platelets, then bleeding time will increase. How these platelets and clotting factors working together to prevent bleeding and clotting of blood is the story of hemostasis. Okay, so in previous I said platelet function test. So we have some, uh, okay. Uh, the normal platelet count is around, for example, 1.4 lakhs. Okay, so uh, one uh, we got a patient and patient has high bleeding time. So increased bleeding time means we will assume that uh, his platelets are dropped due to thrombocytopenia. Uh, since he has less uh, platelets, maybe 60,000 uh, platelets because of less platelets, his bleeding time may increase. So this is one condition where bleeding time can increase due to low platelet count. But interestingly, what we found is patient has normal platelet only they, they, he has 1.4 lakhs of platelet that means normal how a person who has a normal platelet count still show excessive bleeding time the reason might be the patient platelets are fine but those platelets are not activating there might be some problem with the functional status of the platelets okay he may have platelet function uh, disorders in order to assess the platelet functional disorders we have some certain test called platelet function test so that include platelet activation uh, adhesion test platelet aggregation test platelet secretion test platelet clot retraction test ability of platelets to convert fibrinogen to fibrin test then um, the, the the presence or absence of one willebrand factor in the uh, in the in the blood will be detected by this platelet function tests okay anyway so platelets are fine they have they are started converting to fibrinogen to fibrin now we got a problem with play, uh, clotting factors uh, patient may have excessive or less clotting factors so deficiency of this clotting factors can also contribute to the clotting uh, uh, improper clotting time so the clotting time will get uh, affected due to uh, absence of any clotting factors and now how this clotting uh, what are the types of clotting factors and how these clotting factors work together to uh, clot the blood that will be the second story of this lecture okay so uh, now i will discuss about this uh, clotting factors so let me uh, let me share my whole computer screen Mm. Clotting factors. Okay. Let me go to the Google and clotting factors list. Mm. Okay. Mm. So we got clotting factors. And then we have clotting mechanism also. One second. Clotting mechanism. So these are clotting factors. Let me take clotting mechanism here. Coagulation. Coagulation. Mechanism. Where is it? Mm, this is a clotting mechanism. 
This is clotting mechanism. Now I will discuss about clotting mechanism. Okay, all right. So first we discuss about the homeostasis. So in the homeostasis, what have uh, what we learn? So first there will be blood vessel damage. Uh, immediately after blood vessel damage, the collagen fibers will be exposed. Collagen exposed collagen fibers will also release a one milligram factor. Now the plate roaming platelets will get attached to the one milligram factor. Then the platelets will get a, uh, they will release some cytokines. And due to the cytokine environment, other platelets will get, start aggregating at the site of uh, uh, bleeding. Upon aggregation of platelets, now they will get activated and activated platelets will convert fibrinogen to fibrin. So conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin is called as clotting and this clotting is facilitated by cutting clotting factors. And this cutting clotting factors will work together in two forms. So uh, the clotting factors that we have are, total we have cutting clotting factors. So the cutting clotting factors are fibrinogen, prothrombin, tissue thromoplastin, calcium, uh, label factors, sixth stable factors and cell. Uh, Okay, there is no sixth clotting factor. Keep in mind, students, sixth clotting factor has been nullified. So the seventh clotting factor is stable factor, eighth is anti-hemophilic factor, ninth is Christmas factor, tenth is Stuart Prova factor. Then we have eleven plasma thromboplastin antecedent, twelve Hegman factor, and thirteen fibrin stabilizing factor. Now these all clotting factors will work together uh, to clot the blood, and that mechanism is called coagulation mechanism. The coagulation mechanism has two pathways: one is intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway. Okay. Now intrinsic pathway always triggers due to blood vessel damage. Whenever there is a damage to the blood vessel, then the intrinsic pathway will get a, uh, triggered. Whereas the extrinsic okay, this amplification pathway is intrinsic pathway, and this is extrinsic pathway. And extrinsic pathway will be triggered due to tissue damage. So you need to memorize this complete table, how intrinsic pathway occurs and how extrinsic pathway occurs and what is the common pathway uh, that we need to study, okay? So somehow intrinsic and extrinsic factor will convert prothrombin into thrombin. So this is called prothrombin activator. So they will create something called prothrombin activator and that prothrombin activator will convert prothrombin into thrombin. Now this activated thrombin will convert fibrinogen to fibrin and fibrin will result in the clotting of blood. So this is the simplest mechanism of a clotting mechanism. We have two pathways that will make prothrombin inactivated. So the first step is preparation of prothrombin inactivated. Now this second step will be conversion of prothrombin to thrombin. Then third step will be conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin. That facilitates the clotting. Okay. So this com this pathway looks complicated, but I have a, a very good trick of memorizing this pathway. So this pathway is very important uh, uh, for uh, for understanding the future lab tests all breeding profiles and clotting profile can be understood only upon having a, a very good idea on this uh, uh, coagulation mechanism okay so uh, the trick of memorizing this coagulation mechanism is very simple you just follow me students here uh, i will take one second here. Ah, see uh, imagine from 12 to 1 12 to 1 okay so after 12 we will get 11 so after uh, and in the center keep 10 imagine 10 as a center value from 10 imagine 7 so 7 goes to 10 okay so this is like a gun imagine this like a gun 7 10 1 so after 12 we got 11 after 11 we got a, here i'm writing 9 keep in mind 9 then 10 okay in between uh, 11 and 9 i will write uh, the numerical 8 and in between 10 and 9 i'm writing numerical 5 then i will write 10 to 1 okay uh, i don't know how students but you must memorize this one this is very simplest way of memorizing the plotting mechanism okay so first write 12 to 1 and the sequence is 12 11 9 10 2 1 10 to 1 is easy to understand and below the 10 we have 7 and in between 11 and 9 we have 8 okay before 9 we have 8 and half of 10 is 5 so if you remember this this uh, uh, this uh, diagram then this is all about uh, your uh, coagulation mechanism now i will tell how 
see this this is extrinsic pathway this is extrinsic pathway okay and this one from top to one is intrinsic pathway so just to see here in intrinsic pathway we got uh, factor number 12 okay 11 and 12 okay 11 will get uh, okay uh, 11 then we got a uh, uh, fact okay this is a tissue factor okay this is not the right table students there is one more table anyway intrinsic factor will start like this factor 12 11 8 9 5 10 to 1 will be intrinsic factor or this 10 to 1 is common pathway this is common pathway and extrinsic pathway starts with 7 10 to 1 okay now in order to see any defects in intrinsic pathway then we will go with the thrombin time so tt will give us the status of intrinsic pathway correlation factors problems and extrinsic pathway can be st studied by aptt activated partial thromboplastin time aptt and common pathway problems can be detected by thrombin generation test pgt okay and uh, thrombin time thrombin time and the aptt uh, here intrinsic pathway can also be detected by pt prothrombin time so prothrombin time uh, will discuss about the intrinsic pathway abnormalities extrinsic pathway abnormalities will be studied by aptt activated partial thromboplastin time and common pathway disorders can be detected by uh, thrombin generation test and thrombin time okay so these are few tests that we can do in order to uh, understand the problem that occurring among the deficiencies of any clotting factors so in detail about this clotting mechanism i will discuss in tomorrow's lecture okay so uh, to understand this complete hematology, we must be thorough with our hemostatic mechanism and the coagulation mechanism. Unless and until we are becoming clear at these two, we can't move forward. Okay. So let me show you that uh, that also this uh, in coagulation mechanism pathway. Hmm. I got another image, students. I'm just showing. One second. Hmm. Here I got it. Where is it? Oh. See now, uh, uh, this is another photo that I took from internet. See here. So the intrinsic pathway. Uh, I hope you can be able to see this PPT. So this intrinsic pathway started with factor 12, then factor 12 become activated and factor 12 activated 11, 11 activated 9, 9 activated 10 and 10 prepared program in activated. See, 12, 11, 9, 10, 12, 11, 9, 10, as I stated in the pathway, which is intrinsic pathway. Then where is this 8 and 5? See, in between uh, 11 and 9, in between 11 and 9 there is involvement of factor 8 okay factor 8 will involve in 11 and 9 and factor 5 also involves here even though they didn't show, show in this particular table there is an involvement of factor 8 and factor 5 uh, in in the conversion of factor 10 to 10a okay so this 10a can be stated as a prothrombin inactivated now this prothrombin inactivated converted prothrombin into thrombin activated pro thrombin converted fibrinogen to fibrin resulted in clotting of blood fibrin uh, fibrin clot happened and extrinsic pathway started with factor 7. See here, as I stated, factor 7, 10 to 1. Factor 7 created prothrombin inactivated and prothrombin inactivated made 2, 1. What is the second clotting factor, which is prothrombin? Okay, prothrombin converted to thrombin and 1. 1 is fibrinogen. Fibrinogen are converted to the fibrin. So this is the simplest form of uh, uh, memorizing the clotting mechanism, students. Okay, so the idea is 12 to 1. 12, 10 is center. 10 to 1 common pathway then 12 11 9 10 okay in between 11 and 9 8 and in between 9 and 10 is 5 and 7 10 to 1 will be extensive pathway. okay so this is all about the clotting mechanism in tomorrow's lecture we will discuss about the uh, deficiencies and what test we can perform to detect uh, the clotting mechanism mechanism disorders so this is all about the clotting mechanism if you have any doubts you can ask me it will be better if the offline class is starting soon so that we can have very good discussions uh, with brainstorming.
So anyway, so in today's lecture we discussed about the branches of hematology, which include basic hematology, transfusion hematology, and bleeding disorders. Basic hematology include uh, TCL, DL, CECL, PA, ESR, uh, PCV, etc. Then in transfusion medicine we have blood uh, blood grouping, cross matching, donor screenings, RH tapping, Bombay grouping, and compatibility test. Whereas in the bleeding disorders we have BTCT, APTT, DGT, and uh, uh, then we have some. Platelet function uh, test such as clot retraction, platelet secretion test, fibrinogen test, platelet activation test, and platelet aggregation and adhesion test we studied in bleeding disorder. Then we discussed about the hemostatic mechanism. In the hemostatic mechanism, it all starts with a damaged blood vessel to the activation of platelets to conversion of fibrin and the fibrin. Then we discussed about the clotting factors, their pathways, and their involvement and their deficiencies that results in various bleeding disorders. So, in tomorrow's lecture, we will discuss about the specific lab tests that are done for identifying of any. So clotting disorders and the bleeding disorders. Thank you very much, students.